Let's talk a little bit about this example uh, that I had written out here about these two plates sliding relative to one another. We'll just sketch something out um, to illustrate that a little bit better. Uh, let's see. So let's say we've got <coughs> Oops. one plate on top like this, and then we've got another plate on the bottom and we're saying that um, what these plates can slide relative to each other like this or like this just just back and forth um, and then uh, the interface between the two plates needs to be such that a user can stop the top plate in multiple predefined locations relative to the bottom plate. Once the plate, the top plate has been moved to one of these positions, a minimum force greater than just the frictional force between the two plates must be overcome before the top plate will move again. So, <clears throat> if if this uh, this red plate is stacked on top of the black plate, and you're just sliding it across, there's going to be some friction in between those two plates that causes a, a frictional force to move that red plate back and forth. And we're saying that we want it to stop at um, a few predefined positions. So uh, let's say that we've got, um, uh, how do I draw this? Maybe we just have a little bump here. And then on this side, Let's see, we got a little divot and another divot and so divot is like a divot. partial hole almost. That's right. Yep. Something like that. <clears throat> and then so this whole thing, right? This little um, protrusion fits in these little these, these divots. So this is one pretty fine position. This is a second, and this is a third right there. And it, this top plate can only slide back and forth. Uh, so that, that's an illustration of what I was trying to communicate. And oh, the, the perfect. No, it, it makes sense to me. And the way I envision it, it'll go like this. This will be a spring-loaded ball plunger. Mm -hmm. It has a little ball there, so it's going to be rolling on the surface, and then tick, it gets stuck. You have to put more force, and then... Roll, 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 roll. Tick. I guess stuck. More force. Tick. And almost, almost. Uh, it actually would not raise up at all like that. It, it would stay at, at this height. And so as I'm moving it here, it, it looks like the ball is interfering, but really that, that ball has uh, retracted. Retracted, exactly. Yep. And then <laughs> it uh, <laughs> extends. <laughs> okay. Can we go back to the lesson? I want to mm -hmm. show something. So what we're trying to draw is this right here. Yep, that's right. It's going to be rolling, and then what's the sound again? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Cool. So now we can visualize it. Okay. All right, so let's go down to our discussion questions. Before we get started, my question is, I thought this lesson was about, was about these. And what are these called? Uh, they're called ball plungers. And ball plunger, because the title is um, ball plunger and retractor. Mm -hmm. So that is the same hardware item. It's just one item, right? Because it retracts the ball. It's the same family. Um, ball plungers and, and retractors, you, you can think of them a little bit differently. Uh, the ball plunger is literally a ball. It's just like this, a ball with a spring underneath it. Whereas the retractor... It's more like this, where it's not a ball, it's more like, like a plunger. And there's still a spring inside there, but it's, it's, you know, it's elongated. It's not just a ball like this. There's a plunger that moves back and forth. Oh, thank you for that clarification, because I thought that I, I was not able to distinguish these. I just kept on scrolling. So now I see that they're different. And yeah, I mean, you can see the difference. So, going through this question here. Uh, why might a designer choose to use a retracted pin over a ball plunger? I'm thinking. So 
So use a retractor pin over a ball plunger. In the examples that I saw in the YouTube videos, we didn't go over any of these, I don't believe. I don't recall using this for any examples. So I, I don't know why one the other, but this one would not work. I think it would not work for maybe a setting like this. If this is something uh, like a like a box or something sliding down, this will have like its neck out basically. If it's a which one's the one that has the longer one, retractor or plunger? Uh, retractor pin. So this is retractor. Mm -hmm. I don't think a retractor will work in this setting because it would just cut the head off. Basically. That's right. Yep. Yeah, so it's a, a difference in the amount of engagement. And I don't think the retractor will either work on the example that we went in the, over in the beginning of the video because these things, but well, that does look like a retractor though. Well, I was under the impression that it had to be a ball that would roll and it would like click. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the retractor would not work in that setting because the neck or the head is too long. Those are my hypotheses. Yeah, you're right. And as far as the retractor pin, depends how far that pin is protruding down. I mean, if uh, if we had um, if we had something like that, and then on top we have this this block, and maybe we have a, a, a retractor pin in here, but it's you know down to like that level, um, it, as long as the corners of that little divot are not higher than the, the ball portion of that, that pin, this will still retract. Of course, if this divot looked like that instead, and we had our plunger down like, like this, then you're right, that would not work because it would just be locked in place. It, it, it wouldn't work as far as being able to passively move that block back and forth. So going back to the question, why might a designer choose to use a retractor pin over a ball plunger? Well, if you had an application where you wanted to, to like, uh, hard lock a, a block in place relative to something else, this would be a great opportunity for a plunger. Because uh, for a plunger, you probably also have a, a handle up here that you can you can pull up. It's spring loaded, so if you pull that handle up, the retractor will retract, and then you can move your block side to side. Could you show us the handle? This, uh, uh, but like in the photo, is it is the handle on the left one? Like that. Oh, so this one has a handle. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. All right. Yep. Could you add a handle to one of these? Because it looks like. You could put something there. Uh, they don't come like that. I mean, I suppose you could, but it would be a lot of work and a lot of cost to do so without any real benefit because the handle in this one is actually connected to that plunger, whereas if you put a handle here, it wouldn't be connected to the, the internal mechanism because there's a spring. Right. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, next question. Let's see. Can ball plungers or retractors be used equally well in linear and rotational applications? Rotational applications means that the ball rolls inside? No, um, I was referring to uh, applications in which you have something rotate versus applications where you have something move linear, just back and forth. So this is an example of linear. Mm -hmm. Right. What's an example of rotate? Well, uh, let's, let's see, you had, um, I don't know, some, some kind of wheel, and then you had uh, a wall or a block or something, and you have a little divot right here, and then you have your, you know, your plunger sticking out there, and you have this uh, rotational axis, so this, this red ball is, is rotating, that would be an example of a, a rotational application. So the question was, can, a, can ball plungers or retractors be used equally in linear and rotational applications? Mm. 
not interchangeably, it means equally. So we're comparing the same to the same. Mm -hmm. So we're comparing, let's just go one at a time. Can a ball plunger be used equally in linear rotation? Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. And the ball plunger, I would not use a ball plunger for something like this, for instance, because I think the head will get stuck and break because the head is a little longer. Um, uh, the head is longer on a retractor, not the ball plunger. Ball plunger is a, just a, a short a sphere. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the same. Very cool, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could plunger. use it whether it's linear or rotational. It doesn't matter. You, you could use either one. Okay. Uh, why will a retractor lock apart in place, whereas a ball plunger will do so only passively? The length of the head. Is that the right term, the head? Yeah, uh, length of the head. I would say the head is the top, like where you actually pull the retractor. Uh, I would say probably the pin, the length of the, the pin. The length of the pin. Yeah. Longer. Or the plunger. Shorter. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Question D. This might be something that you I, I, I wrote that one in. Uh, I thought that it was fascinating about the the head of the or the ball, how it's lubricated, and I was wondering what lubrication. I mean, we may just be going into the chemistry here, but I thought this was interesting. What lubrication do they put on this? Because the videos say that you don't have to lubricate this; it already comes lubricated, so it can roll inside there. Hmm. I'm actually not familiar with that. Uh, I've never heard or known that there was a particular lubric lubrication. Mm -hmm. On, on these ball plungers. Yeah, I thought that if one could understand what lubrication goes in here, it's good to have that in the back of your mind if you ever come across something that you're designing, perhaps you could use that same lubricant. But it's something I can research on our, on our own. Okay, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Food for thought, that's it. All right. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.